Welcome to Library Line, your connection to the Conneaut community. I'm Kathy Pape, Executive Director of the Library and your host for Library Line. Thank you for joining us today. We have a delicious show planned. It's all about pies. The Pie Festival is coming up. So each one of our segments is going to talk about pies. So if you're hungry and you're watching this, well, I don't want you to get up right now to go and get something to eat. Stay tuned and watch our show because you are going to love it. And you know, the best part about it is everything can be found right here at the Conneaut Public Library. From beginning to end of making a pie, what goes into a pie, even the materials that pie plates are made out of, everything, everything you could possibly think of starts right here at the library. And also when other community events are going on, the library is your one-stop shop for all of that information. So of course, we want to have you watching our show, but we also want you to come in so you can see what's going on. So I invite you in, and I will digress right now and tell you, if you do come into our library, you may start seeing a few changes. We are so pleased to announce that we just received a Conneaut Foundation grant for $8,400. And that money is being used for new computers here at the library, desperately needed computers at the library. We want to make sure that you, Conneaut, that you guys know that we we support information that, that comes in a variety of formats. Not everything is in a book. Many, most, most things are right are on the internet. You have to get the forms off the internet. You have to apply for things on the internet. We have to make sure that our, our materials are up to date and ready for you right here at the library. So thanks to that Conneaut Foundation grant, we will be getting new staff computers and rotating computers into our patron area. And so everybody is going to benefit from this. And believe me, I'm going to hit this a little harder later as we get our new computers in and as things are going on. So to keep you uh, abreast of what we have happening and how things are going to work because we have some really big technology things that are in the works here. And it's pretty cool and you're going to want to just stay tuned. Um, so all of this is being ordered, all this is going on, and so I apologize, um, we are kind of behind on a couple of things, and you might come walk into a big pile of, of computers, but with all that being said, we are going to have an in-service day on October 7th. It's a Friday. What that means is we're going to be closed to the public that day, but our staff is going to be here because we have so much going on that we have to um, you know, be pulling computers out and putting computers in and we're gonna make a big mess and we just need to be able to do that. Whew, okay, enough about technology. Um, I'm going to switch gears into our pie mode. So today's show, all about pies. Later on, Marty Tren will be here and she's from the Kramer home, but she is the mastermind behind the pie festival. So we're super excited. We're gonna sit down and talk with her. We also have Kat and Kathy at the movies. Yeah, they found some information about pies. Yes, they did. We have weird and wacky Conneaut history with Vicki Barker and she's cooked up a little something for you. Plus, we have a very special kids' corner with Steph and Pam. You might want to get the tissues out. <laughs> but up first is our Martha Wannabe, Here's How, with Cindy Prather. Hi, I'm Cindy, and this is Here's How. Well, since it's all about the pie, uh, well, maybe it's not all about the pie. I've got some alternative pie ideas for you. The first thing I want to show you is um, look at these adorable cupcakes. Um, they look just like a pie. And it's simple enough. It's uh, Duncan Hines cake mix. I, I like Duncan Hines. It seems to be the best kind of... Um, um, it, it, it bakes up really nice. Uh, the first thing I did was make my cupcakes. I uh, frosted them with just a buttercream frosting, and I got it to look like pie crust by just using a little bit of cocoa powder and yellow food coloring. So the next step after I frosted it was I took red M&Ms and I laid them on top of the cupcake 
just like this. And you can buy um, a bag of multicolored M&Ms, and you can have a green pie and a chocolate pie and a red pie. But I just went ahead and bought uh, plain red M&Ms. You can buy them at the AC Moore, the craft store, or even some of the specialty candy stores. You could just buy the one plain color. Then, then the next thing you do is, I'm going to lay down my mic so that you can see. This is a uh, Wilton number eight cake tube. It's the circle. And the first thing you'll do is go right across the top of the cupcake. And you'll alternate to make it look like real lattice, back and forth. Just like this. And then come across this way, this way, this way. And then I'm going to change my cake tube because I want to make the fancy crust around the other side. And that one's uh, Wilton cake tube number 18. There we go. I think these are really cute. I just love them. This is going to be staff uh, dessert af after lunch. They turned out really nice. All right, the next thing I have is, um, do you remember when maybe your great grandma, your grandma, your mom, I make them still, these little pinwheel cro cookies that um, you make over the leftover pie crust. You, um, it, all it is is cinnamon and sugar, and you just bake them following the directions on a a lot of times I just use, I cheat, and I buy the uh, pie crust that's already rolled out and flat. It's really good for this kind of thing because it's, it's already there for you. Um, something I saw that was really different were uh, these cookies. It's made the same way as the pinwheels, only you just make a little lattice top. Didn't know, I think these turned out really cute when I saw these. I, I just. I fell in love with them. And I'm going to give you a little demonstration on how, how you can do this lattice. So I'm going to lay down my mic again. Or maybe, can you hear me kind of if I just lay that down, Kathy? Maybe it's OK. I'll kind of talk, and maybe you'll be able to pick something up. All right, the first thing you do is fold over every other one you, after you cut them into strips. This is, pretend this is your pie crust, and that gets folded, every other one. Then you take your next, you lay it down, these get folded back, bring them back over, and bring the last one back over. Then you'll alternate, so the one that you folded, every other one, be every other one. And here's your next one. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Then you'll fold, do one more. I'm going to do one more fold over. Like this. So that you can kind of get the idea and see how this lattice is going to turn out. Then what you do is you take, if you have a circle, co uh, circle cookie cutter, I didn't have one, so I just used a glass from home. And I put it upside down, and I went like this, and I cut out my, my circles. Uh, I put them on a, um, a piece of parchment paper. It seems to cook up a lot nicer on, on parchment. And bake them, follow the directions, which I think was 450 for 12 minutes. And I also um, brushed them lightly with milk. Um, Sorry about that. I brushed them lightly with milk and sprinkled them with the cinnamon and sugar and baked them. They just turned out really cute. 
the last thing I did was, of course it is a pie, but it's one of the, um, one of those unique kind of pies, it's called mock apple pie, and I made it with zucchini, and it's made, it's same ingredients as you would for an apple pie. It's your sugar, flour, cream of tartar, cinnamon, nutmeg. The only difference is um, when you cut up your zucchini, you have to take the seeds out of it and you slice them like you would your apple and you boil them on the wa in a pan of water for about 10 minutes just to tenderize them a little bit. But other than that, you follow the same instructions like, just like you would an apple pie. So I, I hope you'd like to try something different. All of these things I did find on the internet. Uh, all you have to do is like Google mock apple pie with the, um, with the, the cinnamon cookies. I found that at imnotmartha.org. And the cupcakes I got out of one of our magazines we here, have here at the library. It was either uh, Oprah or Woman's World. I think it was in both of them actually. So. Um, Try something different, and I'll see you next time on Here's How. And now it's time for Spotlight on the Community. And we have a community representative right here, Marty Tren. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Well. I'm all geared up. Oh, gosh, tell me. <laughs> I'm really super excited about the Pie Festival. I know we've been talking about it a lot here at the library, but explain to everybody what is going on. All right. The Pie Festival is just a big celebration about pie everything to do with pie. Uh, the Kramer Home is sponsoring it. We have you, the library. We have Crazy Dave's involved this year, and I'm hoping next year after we do this, we might get a few churches or some other organizations that get in on it with us. It's a progressive festival. Instead of blocking off the downtown and irritating everybody, <laughs> uh, we're going to do it at the different businesses. Okay. The Kramer Home is going to have cabbage roll dinners and chicken and biscuits and all mm. kinds of pie and banana bread, zucchini bread, pumpkin bread that's going to be for sale. We're going to have music. We have Tom Gwilt that plays guitar. We're going to have Rod Riker. He plays the piano. He plays honky-tonk piano. Oh, like that, that sounds awesome. And that's on Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, Tom will be back with his guitar. Okay. And uh, then in the afternoon... Um, Lynn Higgins, she's a school teacher here in town. She plays the guitar and sings, and I think it's her brother and a friend. They're going to do a program that they used to sing in coffee houses oh. back when she was in college. Well, that's cool. And I think she plays the banjo, too, but I'm not sure if she's going to do that. Well, very nice. But um, they're very interesting, very interesting people. We're going to have a pie-eating contest on Saturday. Okay. So any of you that have big appetites and want to try and win $25, you can try and how much pie? How much pie do you think somebody's going to eat for this? It's going to be in thirty seconds. So oh, would, okay, okay. I would think maybe two pies, <laughs> <laughs> maybe three. If we're, you know, well, uh, whatever. What they kind of pies? Do. I'm not sure. I'm uh, gonna mince meat, yeah. something weird. No, 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 those are expensive <laughs> to make. <laughs> uh, uh, I think I hate to think of a pie that I spent two hours making and it just gets jammed. Yeah, into somebody's yeah, face, yeah. You know? <laughs> so anyway, it'd be something kind of simple. Um, and then on Sunday, we're going to have a pie baking contest. We have four categories. There's the, the tr traditional fruit pie okay. that's baked. And then the second category is a meat pie, like your Italian meat pie or maybe um, a shepherd's pie oh, or something like that. Oh, interesting. And then the third one is like you bake the shell and then you put the filling in, like a coconut cream, banana cream. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, there's different okay. ones. Those are just a couple. Of them. It can be anything in that category. Okay. And then the fourth category is a surprise pie, something that mm. is unusual, like a. That's pie. everything I bake. <laughs> That's a surprise pie right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a, a pineapple almond. Or maybe a rhubarb strawberry or oh, a that's my favorite fruit, cream rhubarb something. I just bought forty pounds of rhubarb. <gasps> really? So you have to come. Oh, I, I have to <laughs> strawberry rhubarb pie. That's my favorite. Okay, so the library is doing their event on Friday, September thirtieth. So when you say Saturday and Sunday, it's mm -hmm. October first and second. Is right. that correct? Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. 
We're going to do it uh, the first and second. It's from 10 until 5. Okay. And Crazy Dave's, I think theirs is from 10 until 5 on Saturday and 10 to 3 on Sunday. Okay. And uh, they're going to have crafters and vendors and all kinds of dinners, special price oh, dinners with pie. Oh, wonderful. And um, I just think it's going to be a whole weekend of pie. So oh, get my your appetites gosh. ready. Well, no, it sounds like a really fun idea. What made you think of it? Well, I read it in a magazine. Hmm. She read yeah. it in a magazine, folks, <laughs> right here at the library, maybe, right? Well, uh, <laughs> we have it, though. You have it, <laughs> right. Uh, it was a small town. I think it was in New England, and it had a small, you know, like maybe 900 mm -hmm. people, something like that. And it started out with a family. They had four or five girls, and every holiday they'd get together and bake pies. Oh. Well, it's kind of a lost art. Yeah. It sure is. People, it's not easy. People don't remember how to make pies if they ever learned when they were children. And it's kind of a handed down thing. And yeah, you can try and do it, you know, uh, you know what? directions, but you really need to watch somebody do it. That's true. And, you know, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not much of a baker, but, you know, I'll do pies on occasion, certainly. And I have never tasted a store-bought pie that tastes the same as a homemade. Mm -hmm. And, you know, crusts are similar. But there's nothing like a homemade crust, and you can certainly tell well, the difference. Well, I make a crust with a, it has vinegar and egg in it, and it's like a pastry. Mm. And at, I had pie classes in the month of August, and I had uh, anywhere from 10 to se 7 to 10, maybe 12 people at the classes. And they said they had tried to make pies in the past, and their crust always ended up like leather. And this crust, you can work with it. Oh, it's really good. And that stays, sounds good. It stays good. So, and what's your favorite pie? Um... Lemon meringue. Oh, they surprise. Also okay. Have rhubarb. I like rhubarb. Do too. you? Yeah. Now it's apple season, so mm -hmm. we're probably going to see a lot of apple pies. I just got some apples and pears. I'm going to make at least one pie that's apple pear pie. No, that's something I haven't yeah, heard of. Are you giving your secrets away for your special secret pie? Or? Mm, well, we're going to put all our <laughs> recipes together in a booklet. <gasps> Are you really? And then maybe next year we'll be selling the recipes. Oh, that's a fabulous idea. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. You know, in, in pie making, too, I know it's such an individual art Kind of, you know what I mean? Everybody has, you know, your own touch that goes into it is right. going to make it taste different. Mm -hmm. the, your oven, you know, the size oh, plate yeah. that you're putting it in, Definitely. all of those things, mm -hmm. you know, the same people can make, follow the same recipe and really yeah. have a different a product. Bit different. I was, Eloise Jones is a, a member of the Kramer Home, and she's an old pie maker. And she said she makes a green tomato pie. Ew. And she said, if, <laughs> I know, it doesn't sound appetizing yeah, to me. I know, it doesn't. But she said, if you put, you, you put a tablespoon of vinegar in it, it tastes like apple. If you put lemon in it, it tastes like rhubarb. Really? Yeah. Huh. And then this other lady, her name is Catherine Klein. She's there. She piped up. And we have these discussions all the time the dinner table after dinner they sit there for an hour hour and a half and talk about the good old days and they used to do this and that but anyway Catherine said her grandmother I think made a green tomato gravy she said that was just out of this world she said really? she wished she had the recipe on that oh my gosh so well tomatoes a fruit so there you yes. have it right <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And the, right now we probably have a lot of green tomatoes with all this rain. Yeah, that's that's My true. My garden has a lot, so I think <laughs> I may make a green tomato pie. You know what? It's, yeah, it's worth trying. Right. You never know. That's right. Oh, my gosh. She said you can't tell the difference. I've just never heard of that. Yeah. That is really, really well, and unique. And then there's fried green tomatoes, too. Oh, yes, of yeah. course. Right. I like fried anything. That's, <laughs> that's, that's something I can eat for sure. Mm. Wow. Well, well, this sounds really fun, and I really do hope it has um, a nice following this year. And then, I do, too. You know, it just like everything else, it takes a while to build right. and, and, you know. Well, anyway, the small town I was telling you about. Oh, yeah, started, back to that. Okay. They started with these four girls and their mother, and then it was their friends, and then it was their neighbors. And before you know it, the whole town was doing it, and people were coming from all over to eat their pie. Huh. So they took over. There's three churches in town. They took over the churches. They turned it into a huge festival, and they bring in two and a half million dollars on a weekend. Hello? That's really? A, that's a village of 900 people do this. Huh. Wow. So I thought, Conant needs that kind of money. Yeah, we do. We like to eat. You know, we have a lot of cool people in town. Right. And boy, we could use the money. Right. <laughs> it's and a if perfect we get, scenario. If we get known as the pie festival capital of Ohio, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> and you know what? I like the way you think because it's a, it's a lot like us here at the library, you know. 
we, you know, like, we're going to try it. It's going to be the best ever. It's going to, you know, and that's what you got to do, well, like right? like seahorses. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, we love our seahorses. Yeah. We love our little yeah. babies. I know I'm wearing my shirt, or my seahorse shirt. The back is even really cool. We'll show, we'll show that certainly during the show, but mm -hmm. oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, it's, it's all about people trying and trying new things because we can't keep doing the same things over and over no. because obviously you're going to get the same results, you know. Right. But we all have to be trying new things. And Well, I we're going to do it rain or shine. It Perfect. would be nicer if it's sunny. <laughs> um, but we, we've got the use of the neighbor's backyard. He always lets us use his backyard, which is oh, nice oh, of at him. The over at the Kramer home. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we're going to get the use of the park. So we'll have a lot of parking. Wonderful. And we're going to put some tents up. Okay. And tables and everything. And even if it's a little drizzly, I think we get a little cozier. Sure. And we listen to some nice uh, uh, some Spanish classical guitar. <gasps> Love it. And then honky-tonk music. That's on Saturday. And then Sunday, more classical um, Spanish guitar. And then uh, Lynn Higgins and her group. We'll be there in the afternoon, and in between all of this, we're going to have our contests. We've got games for children. They can win some prizes. Wonderful. Um, I think we'll have a really fun time, and it we can like eat it. lots of good food. Oh, wow. Especially those that are, like, after church. Mm -hmm. You want to come on over and have dinner and a piece of pie? Absolutely. That would be a great thing. And, and I'm going to have every kind of pie you can think of. And so are you, are you already baking? Can you bake? I made, I'm, I'm putting the crust together okay. and freezing them. Okay. But I haven't put the pies together. I make them fresh. We're gonna make, make them fresh. Friday and or very early Saturday morning. Wow, your oven's going to be in overdrive. <laughs> well, I've got at least five people. They're all baking for me. Oh, at their okay, homes. good. And we're also going to use the um, United Church of Christ. We're going to use their kitchen. Perfect. That's so what we're going to have need. lots and lots of food. And for those that don't make it that weekend, if you would like to order a pie or some kind of uh, bread for the holidays, mm -hmm. I will take orders oh. and uh, have them for the holidays. Wonderful. So I've been doing cookies for several years. I've been doing Christmas cookies. But this year we're going to do uh, like the uh, zucchini bread, the pumpkin bread, and the um, banana bread. We're going to sell those and cookies. And I'll take orders. It can start now. And then you tell me when you want to pick them up and when you would like them, and I'll have them ready for you. Well, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. So do you sleep? Hello? Like uh, you're a busy about lady. Four or five hours a night. <laughs> I don't sleep well. So. <laughs> well, you're too busy to sleep. You've got <laughs> festivals to plan. Right. Marty, thank you so much for oh, sharing welcome. this information, and I wish you the best of luck thank over the you. weekend. And we're going to be trying hard here on Friday, too. So I hope everybody comes out to the Pie Festival. See you on the 1st and 2nd of October. Wonderful. Thank you. Hi. Welcome to Kat and Kathy at the movies. Today we are talking about cooking movies, especially pie, because A Taste of Cognac is happening around the community starting next Friday. Here at the Cognac Public Library, you can buy a slice of homemade pie and enjoy our book sale. Then on Saturday and Sunday, go and visit the Kramer Home and Crazy Dave's for special dinners, pies, and crafts, and other things going on. And the best movie to describe this coming weekend would be Waitress. This is a sweet and sassy comedy about the power of friendship, motherhood, and second chances. Starring Carrie Russell, who also starred in the TV series Felicity, Felicity? Mm -hmm is a small-town waitress with big dreams. She's pregnant by an abusive husband and has an uncanny gift for baking out-of-this-world pies. This is her ticket out, to open her own pie shop and transform her life. When she meets a stranger, things start to happen. But what's really interesting about this movie, the director and also the gal who played Jenna's friend and fellow waitress Dawn is film director Adrian Shelley, who was murdered not long after this film came out. Seems that she had an argument with a construction worker. She slapped him. He hit her unconscious, didn't want to get in trouble, hung her in her shower to make it look like a suicide. So it's quite a good movie. Enjoy it. It's got quite a story behind yes, it, Yes, it does. I didn't know that. So everyone will want to see her, too. And if you go on the website for the movie, it has all the recipes for all the pies that she makes in the movie, and some of them are, look really, really good. 
movies about pies, it makes my mouth water just thinking about them. Pie movies are, surprisingly enough, mostly chick flicks, unless your man is somebody who likes to be in the kitchen with you. Probably the only movie that a man might like to watch it is a movie called Big Night with Stanley Tucci and Monks Tony Shalhoub. And it's a movie about two men who own a restaurant and they're trying to entice a food critic to come into the restaurant and put their restaurant on the map and beat out all the competition in the neighborhood. So they have a lot of funny planning that goes on, a lot of delicious cooking. I dare you to try to watch this movie on an empty stomach. <laughs> Another cooking movie is one we have here called No Reservations. Kate, played by Catherine Zeta-Jones, is a workaholic master chef who has to share her kitchen with a free-spirited sous chef, played by Aaron Eckhart. She also has to take care of her orphan niece, who now lives with her. This is a love of life, a great food, spicing up this warm-hearted, funny tale about a woman discovering a world bigger than her kitchen. That's a really good movie, too. Uh, I mentioned Stanley Tucci before. He's also in another movie called Julie and Julia. This is a movie about uh, Julia Child, and uh, the wonderful Amy Adams plays in this as well. And she's a newlywed who tries to cook her way through the famous French chef's first cookbook. Um, you may not have seen it because you think, oh, Julia Child, she's probably boring and strange and weird. But actually, her and, Mer her and Stanley Tucci are a couple, and they have a wonderful relationship, and it really endears you to this movie, so it's worth watching just for that. And for the kids, we have another great cook movie called Ratatouille. Ratatouille is from Disney Pixar and the creators of Cars and the Incredibles. It is American computer animated breakthrough comedy with something for everybody, delightful characters, and the name ratatouille is a French dish which is served in the film. So, take the kids out for this movie. It's pretty good to see. It is a good movie. The movie Chocolat, which we have here at the library, uh, but it is out, is uh, about a bakery full of wonderful tasty treats, one of whom is Johnny Depp, and I don't think I need to say any more about that. <laughs> There's a couple others. There's Tortilla Soup, Soul Food, and Babette's Feast. They are all about fancy meals and big, crazy families. If you've ever been in charge of the holiday feast, you'll be able to relate to the stories that go on in these movies. And I would be remiss if I missed an opportunity to mention the books behind a couple of these movies. After all, the origin of the word library actually means of books. So. The movie Chocolat is based on a book called Chocolate by Joanne Harris, who we have it here at the library, and Julie and Julia is based on the book by the same name by Julie Powell. And they're both really good reads. One is nonfiction, one is fiction. I hope we whetted your appetite with all these wonderful cooking and baking movies. All of them in the review are either at our library or in one of the libraries that we're connected with. So come on in and check them out. It's Vicki with Wild and Wacky Connie and History. Today's story is about pumpkin pies. If you had a pumpkin pie anywhere between the mid 19th century and the mid uh, 20th century, it was probably from Connie at Cummins Canning Factory. They were famous for their pumpkins, also their tomatoes. Now, the Cummins uh, Canning Factory was started in about 1863 by David Cummings. He lived over on Liberty Street. He had a nice garden he, uh, to provide for his family, but it grew too big, and so he started sharing his produce with neighbors and friends and decided he'd go into business. So he started canning about the next year, and in 1875, he decided he needed more acreage, so he bought some like 21 acres over there by Lincoln Drive. And then later on, an additional 70 acres. Now, he finally built his factory about 1877. Now, he, he designed and built the machinery and installed it himself right in the factory. Uh, in 1879, he was, uh, he was outgrowing his farm, so he, was, he had to contact local farmers to get produce from them. Now, in 1909, the plant burned down, and so he decided instead of rebuilding it, he sold the business to a Mr. Campbell, who continued that business on until 
he, he and his family continued that business on until about the mid uh, about 1953, and that's when the land was sold to Eximet, and later on the label was sold to a company in New York. So this is an example of one of the labels. I'm not sure if this is the same one that was sold to the company uh, in New York, but it was labeled under the name of Lakeshore. And here's a picture of all the pumpkins just outside the factory. Oh, and the wild and wacky part is, well, there's a couple of wild and wacky parts. Uh, there was a report of a young man who was in the Philippines. He wrote home on the back of a canning label from Lakeshore Canning. And also it's reported that uh, Cummins Canning might have supplied uh, cans of pumpkins and tomatoes to Perry's expedition to the North Pole. Isn't that exciting? Well, this is Vicki signing off with Connie It's Wild and Wacky History. Hi. Welcome to Kids Corners with Miss Steph and Miss Pam. Um, before we get started, I just want to say there will not be a Library Lunacy puppet show today. And the reason for that is upcoming on a future segment of Library Line. We have a great big surprise coming and we're going to unveil it in a future show. So we're just going to tell you about some upcoming programs. Okay, on this Friday, September 30th, from 4.30 to 5.30 here at the library, we're having a pie in the sky after school. And it's for children in kindergarten through grade five. And you can either call in or stop in to sign up. And you will hear some delicious stories. Yeah, create a potpourri pie to take home. And you might even get to taste a little ugly pie. <laughs> ugly pie? I don't know. You don't know what ugly pie is? Well, if you come to our after school, we're going to be reading this story called Ugly Pie by Lisa Will Wheeler and illustrated by Heather Solomon. In this story, Bear wakes up with a hankering for some ugly pie. He goes and visits many of his friends. Someone has a pumpkin pie. Someone has a rhubarb pie. But nobody has ugly pie. So he decides he'll just have to make his own ugly pie. And in the back of this, there is a recipe for Bear's Ugly Pie. So you just might be tasting some ugly pie if you come to that program. That sounds good to me. Yeah. And as I was getting ready for this program and I went through my collection, I was pleasantly surprised to see how many books we have, fiction books, um, about pie. Over here we have one called... I know an old lady who swallowed a pie. And that's a takeoff on I know an old lady who swallowed a fly. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun. This is another book right here called The President and Mom's Apple Pie. I believe this is taken from a true story, isn't it? Some uh, of the facts in the book. Yeah, it's kind of a historical fiction picture book. It's about, I believe that's uh, President Truman or President Hardy? Who was our, who was our chubby president? <laughs> Taft, actually. <laughs> Excuse me. I think he was the one that got stuck in the bathtub. I think so. Pie eating too much pie. Uh, could be. And this is one called Pecan Pie Baby by Jacqueline Woodson and illustrated by Sophie Blackall. This is another one. This is an old book that they've redone that is a lot of fun, and I just reordered it. This is a new book to our collection, as well as Ugly Pie, The Blueberry Pie Elf. And he lives in a house where they bake a blueberry pie, and he gets to taste it. And he loves blueberry pie. So he's waiting for the, um, his people that live in the house to make another blueberry pie. Well, they make an apple pie. He doesn't like that. They make a cherry pie. He doesn't do that like that. He has to come up with a way to let the people in the house know that he wants another blueberry pie. And if you want to find out how he does that, you'll have to read The Blueberry Pie Elf um, by Jane Thayer. Another book we have is a beginning reader called Sweet Potato Pie. This is another fun book called How to Make an Apple Pie and See the World. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. And that was written by Marjorie, excuse me just a minute here, Priceman. Here's another one featuring a bear. 
James Bears Pie, written by Jim Latimer. And this is a fun book, if you want to open this, Pam. This has some interesting um, uh, graphics in it. Pie in the Sky by Lois Ellert. She is actually, I believe, an Ohio author. And she's known for making her own paper and coming up, and this one I'm pretty sure she made her own paper for this one, coming up with these very interesting collage type um, pictures and double spreads like this. These are really nice stories for um, using in a big crowd like I use at Story Hour. We'll be using that one if we do Story Hour with I pies. I like the colors in it too. And one last one. How to make a cherry pie and see the USA. Is that the same as? No, that's well, different. It looks Two like of them. if you make pie, you can travel. <laughs> <laughs> um, and starting tomorrow, uh, story Hour, uh, Books and Babies actually starts tomorrow. And on Wednesday, we have Story Time for Tots. And Thursday is our Story Hour for four and five year olds. We, I believe our two and three year old on Wednesday is totally filled up. It is. We have quite a few openings on the baby classes. So if you're interested, birth to two on Tuesdays, you can still sign up. And, and also the Story Hour. A few openings, openings, not, not a lot, but there's a few opens on Thursday for four and five year olds. So it's not too late. Yeah. You can still sign up. So be looking for that surprise with Library Lunacy next time. Mm -hmm. See, See you, you then. Later. Well, that wraps up another library line. I thank you for joining us. And as you can see from today's show and all the shows, we always have so much going on here at the library from our seahorses to the brand new puppet stage and all of our cool new puppets all of the new books, the new technology that we're getting, um, with a big thanks going out to the Conneaut Community Foundation, um, to pies and all of the wonderful things that you saw today having to do with the pie festival. So much is going on and I really hope that you're making the library part of your activities for the week, for every month, whatever you'd like to do and however you'd like to work it out, we would love to see you. And we just, we'd, we welcome you. If you don't have a library card or maybe not everybody in the family has a library card, remember, you need to be represented in the state of Ohio and you need to make sure that every member in your family has a library card. And we would love, love, love to have new members here so you can take part in all of the cool things that we have. And um, speaking of taking part in things, um, I'm sorry, I think the Here's How segment was the coolest thing ever. And you know, when Cindy showed these um, little pinwheels, this reminds me of my grandmother. My grandmother, my grandma Keel, would always, always make pinwheels for us. And every single time I see a pinwheel, I think of my grandma. So, you know, I was trying to decide between the cupcake and the pinwheel, and um, I think I'm going to go for the pinwheel in honor of my grandma. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>